some cars going up because of the chip crisis, you might be looking for a used car. And here to make sure you're not getting a lemon is Shae of Mazvo with some helpful hints. And Shae, we have to talk about this. And that is, there is a big chip crisis. So you might be ordering a new car, but you might not see it yet, right? That's correct. Right now, it's everything's on pause. After the pandemic, it just basically became halt. Uh, obviously, when they say chip shortage, it's basically the manufacturer just stopped producing cars. That dominoed into parts as well. So on my end, though folks are looking for new cars, I'm also waiting for parts. So it's really a bad crisis right now. And so it's pushed the market to say, all right, I'm not patient. I want a car. So the used car market just skyrocketed, of course, with higher prices. Yeah, but when it goes to a used car, you've got to make sure you are doing your best at checking everything out. And that's where you come in. So let's go through some of the tips because someone probably right now is on their way to take a look at, an, at a used car. Yes, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. So first things first, always, always, regardless of your I need, you need to make sure you separate uh, emotional with sensible. Don't buy a car based on the beautiful sunroof and the roof rack uh, or the convertible or the big wheels or the step size. You want to base it on functionality. If it's just going to be you in the car uh, all day and no one else and once in a while you have another passenger, you don't need to be in a six passenger vehicle that's a four by four with all these roof racks and all the add-ons. So don't buy too much car. That's step number one. Okay. Step number two is make, yeah. Go ahead. I, I was going to say and, step and number step two. two yeah. <laughs> Yeah, step two is basically you want to make sure that you audit the amount of miles you're going to be driving a year. Okay, so you bought the car, it's beautiful, you love it. But if it's going to sit in the driveway, because most folks after the pandemic are working out of the house. So if you're driving less than 10,000, sometimes 7,000 miles a year, you've got a car that's just sleeping more than actually awake. So you're going to have dry rotted tires, you're going to have paint that's going to be oxidized. So make sure you really, really audit and understand what it is that you want for value versus I just need a car to get to and from. Okay, let's talk about miles because I've been seeing these cars who have 120,000 miles on it that are asking, you know, for almost $10,000. Is, is that a price we need to start looking at? Yeah, you know, it's, it's unfortunate, but right now the, the amount of uh, uh, price hike is just so crazy. It almost makes you stop and say, all right, if I'm going to buy this vehicle for ten, fifteen thousand, dollars what is this vehicle brand new? Oh, 21000 or 22000 For $7,000 more, you're getting zero miles brand new. So it's almost making it to where, unfortunately, the best value, not the best price, the best value is MSRP new. But they don't have them available. So we have to be really be patient and make sure that you understand that that $10,000 car that you buy now in two years when unfortunately this market may crash, it's not going to be worth anywhere near what you paid for it. And now good luck selling it. Okay, let's talk about some hidden uh, pricing in when you're uh, buying a used car because I, I know you said like taxes, um, insurance, um, registration, all that, what we don't yeah. think about. No, absolutely. So again, another one of the steps is budget. Make sure that you understand your budget. If you say, well, I only have $8,000 or $10,000, but you're buying from a used car lot or a dealership, remember there's tax, title, and license. So the average tax, title, and license documentation fees run between $1,800 and $3,000, depending on how much the car is. So if you're at $10,000, but you're buying from a dealer, you're more like $13,000. So now you got to go back to seven, eight, so you can be your $10,000 marker. But if you buy from a private party, obviously you don't pay taxes, but there comes the little real serious of you really got to make sure that you get it checked out and do your due diligence. So there you go, getting them checked out. And that's what we're going to talk now. I know we're, uh, we got time for it. Good. Let's talk about getting it checked out because it's not just getting the car and driving around the block and coming back and going great. No, no, absolutely not. What you want to do first thing is, uh, the st first step is once you find the vehicle and you actually are going to go to that person or that location to look at it, make sure you drive it, but not just around the block. Drive it on the freeway. Do 60, 70 miles an hour for 5, 10 miles. Roll down all the windows. Turn on all the lights. Turn the AC on. Turn the heater on. Not for one second, a whole minute. Put the blower to the floor, to the face, to the sides. Make sure all that is functioning. Open the trunk. Look at the spare tire. Look to make sure there's a jack there. All that first. Second, make sure you get a Carfax. Carfax is important to at least give you some guideline to know what the history of the vehicle is from the dealership or how many owners it's had or if it's been in an accident. 
no. And step three is make make sure that you go to a uh, your trusted auto repair shop to have it fully inspected. Like they raise it up and they look for any kind of oil leaks, belts, hoses, uh, spark plugs, and most importantly, they plug it into the OBD2 to look to make sure that there's no pending codes or history because a lot of people, unfortunately, they cheat and what they do is they disconnect the battery to turn off the engine light right before they show the car and if you don't get it checked out, no one's gonna know and here it is two days later, you have an engine light on, sorry, you're an owner, you're stuck. Exactly, right there. Um, Shahe, tell them how they can bring a car over, over to you to get checked out. Yes, absolutely. We do. We offer buyer's inspections. You just basically give us a call. It's an hour wait. We drive it. We go to comprehensive inspection of the whole vehicle. We'll let you know if it looks like it's been hit, repainted, and of course, along with your Carfax that you can bring, we'll give you the guideline to say, yes, this is a good vehicle, or if it's not, at least give it in writing so you can go back to the seller and say, look, you're asking this much, but look at everything it needs. Can we negotiate? Can you drop the price down so I can fix it and be within my budget? I like it. All right. Come on back later on the show and we'll talk about leasing which is very interesting coming from a mechanic because he says it's kind of the same thing you need to be checking out too leasing so we'll talk about that later on so okay you got it all right there you go so we'll come back talking about leasing.